Hey, what's up guys, Totally Dubbed here, and today I'm going to do a video review for the Kennerton Magister, and these are a Fisher Audio product, and I'll get to that in just a second. Now, normally I don't do these type of videos, simply because I feel that headphone ratings, at least for me, change every now and then when I get more experience with different headphones or different earphones, and audio is always evolving with different brands. But... In this case, I thought to make an ex exception, um, just like I did with the AKGs, um, the 545s, I felt that these uh, headphones really deserved a video review, because in my uh, written review, which you can find on my website, in the link in the description below, I named these the best closed back headphones I have ever heard. And I've heard the likes of uh, Fostex TH900s, I've heard the likes of Audacy um, XCs, um, LCD XCs that is, um, I've heard the Denon D2000, D5000s, the AKG offerings, uh, Audio Technica offerings, um, and even compared these to open back Sennheiser headphones as well, um, although they're a different breed of headphones, but comparing it with the likes of the HD800 and HD700, I thought that type of headphone really deserves its own review. So before getting into it, I should uh, tell you what is in the box and it's very simple. You get a headphone with a removable cable that is like this. You get a quarter inch adapter and you get the big case that you might be accustomed to from Fisher Audio that is uh, made out of foam. Now the case itself and the accessories, uh, well the case itself is really nice, but it would be nice to have a carrying case. The accessories are, as you can see, there. well there's nothing in there. It would have been nice to have a secondary wire and also a carrying pouch, especially at the price range that this comes in at, at £475, which is around $800, so it's a high price tag. So it would be nice to have an extra wire, and the reason um, I say an extra wire is simply because of the three meter long cable that you get. So the three meter long cable is absolutely huge. As you can see the thickness of the cable itself, if I just compare it uh, to let's say my D D2000 cable, which in itself is um, quite heavy and quite thick, this is a D2000 cable, or actually D7000 cable, and this is a Kenaton cable. You can see the thickness of that is absolutely huge. And if I compare it to something like a 3.5mm jack, um, you'll be able to see over here, this is my Fisher, um, not my Fisher, this is my Digizoid amp with a, um, a custom cable. You can see the cable over here and look at the size of that thing. So it's huge, uh, a big, big cable, 3 meters long and it is really made for home use. The problem with this cable is that obviously if you're going to be someone like me that uses it um, in and around your desk, a three meter cable is just too much and you can't even put it in your pocket and walk around with. So it would be nice if we had a, separate, a secondary cable that you know just connected in just like this removable cable does and can go in and have it on the go. Furthermore, in terms of accessories, it would have been nice if we had extra pads. You can see that there's pads over here, and these pads can actually be revolved. If you turn these around, they come out. This is really good, actually, for the longevity, which I'll come to in, uh, in the build quality section, but it would have been nice to have extra pads uh, because um, different people might have different preferences. But in terms of the overall package, it is decent. Not something you'd expect from a £475 um, headphone, but it is decent enough. Now moving swiftly on to the build quality, the build quality is absolutely insane, top to bottom. Now you saw the cable, if I start off from here, you can even see the cable over here. You know, It might be a norm for some headphones, but you've got a screw on for the quarter inch adapter over here. It's a 3.5 millimeter uh, gold plated jack, and you can see it's a nice big jack that is really intended for amps. And at the end of this big braided cable, you've got two wires that connect into your headphones, which are clearly indicated with right and left, and they go into your headphone like so. So that is the cable. Moving up to the headphones themselves, it is really screaming quality. First of all, you can see the uh, blue and red uh, indicators for the left and right. On the side, you've got this beautiful um, um, big oak cable, um, uh, 
cup. Now this cup is 2,000 years old. The wood that is used is 2,000 years old, over 2,000 years old. And that just screams quality. It's not something that you'll find like um, uh, a normal oak wood or something that might be just a couple of years old. This is 2,000 years old and it's been certified to be 2,000 years old. And you can just look at the quality of that detail and the wood is just really, really beautiful. And I know this would probably drive up the costs of the headphones, but I'm pretty sure these wooden cups have a huge part to play in the sound quality, and I'll get to the sound quality in a bit. Just to compare the look of it, here's my D2000s which have been modified with a D5000 cup, and you can see the cup over here, and you can see the cup look over here. You can see that this looks manufactured and not should I say fake, but you know obviously it's real wood, but you can see that it's been you know manufactured for uh, quite a long time. This one looks like it's just being cut off a branch and put in uh, on the headphone. You can see the manufacturing process actually on my um, written review. Uh, there's a video from Fisher Audio that show that. It is really cool. So you know the the build quality of this wood is really nice and you've got a nice stamp over here a Kenneton audio equipment you know really kind of stamp of um, approval and stamp of quality moving on from that you've got a nice metal construction over here that holds the drivers in place really securely you've got a left and right indicator on the top of the headband and you've got a nice clicking feeling uh, for this um, for the headband so for the adjustments it's really nice to do also the headband itself is really good is apparently made from lamb skin um, it does smell like leather I must say but it, it again oozes quality and you can see at the top right at uh, um, sorry bottom uh, right you've got Kenneton written on there so you can see the quality of the finishing there and the stitching is really top class now in terms of the pads themselves, they're also of this um, this lamb skin. They do feel really nice and they're very soft. They actually somewhat remind me of the Lawton Audio pads um, which are over here. So you can see Lawton Audio pads are a little bit um, thicker obviously and um, have a little bit of different material but the pad feeling of them and especially on the head is similar. These are much softer uh, on the head. Now, the build quality, as you can see, as an overall build quality, it's insanely good. From top to bottom, I mean from the cable all the way up to the headphone, it is really top class and there's no way to fault this headphone in terms of build quality. As I said, the only thing that would be a nice would have been an included cable, a shorter cable. Now in terms of the design and the look, as you can probably imagine, I love it. The wooden finish is really nice and the look really gives off like a professional kind of look uh, to it. It's something that you probably wouldn't be... Um, uh, <laughs> you probably wouldn't... Um, uh, put it a across you that it would fit every sort of generation that would look at this and go that's a good quality a good looking headphone however the headphones are very thick as you can see just squishing them down like this they're really big if I compare these again to the Denons because they're a nice reference you can see that the um, the Fishers are, or the Kenneton should I say are really big especially with that uh, uh, that cup which is quite big so it adds a lot of extra uh, bulk around your ears and speaking of that, in terms of a bulk around your ears, the comfort. Now the comfort unfortunately isn't great and the reason behind that is not actually due to, due to the pads because the pads are actually very comfortable, it's actually due to the clamp. The clamp for me is just too much. My head probably stretches it out till there and I've got a medium sized head. God forbid you've got a big head, I don't know how it would fit and the clamp would feel really bad. Again, if I compare it to the D2000, you'll be able to see straight away that the clamp is very loose. If I just do this, it's very loose. But this one, I need to put quite a lot of force in order to pull them apart. Again, if I compare it to another headphone, for example, the AKG 545s, you can see that, again, the clamp is not much. It is stronger than the D, uh, D2000s, but, again, it's quite weak and it's quite malleable. You know, if I do that, it's still... Um, still very loose whereas these are quite hard so unfortunately the comfort isn't that great it's not something that I would go around wearing or would like to wear for a long time especially if you wear glasses but that said that is subjective that is due to my my maybe my head size or the the, the fact that I'm 
I'm used to kind of loose headphones. Um, like for example, I have no idea how people wear Beats uh, by Dre Pros because those are beyond insane in terms of a clamp. It looks like someone has literally taken a vice to your head and attached it to you. Despite its sound quality being absolutely atrocious, that is something else. I'm just talking about the clamp. The clamp of the Beats are just too hard um, and this is you know in, in similar fashion quite hard and I don't know why Fisher have uh, made it again in this respect because they had the zero uh, zero two uh, W's um, that had the same sort of clamp um, despite them being almost identical in terms of clamp the pads of these Kenetons are much better now in terms of the sound quality where it actually matters now I did say at the beginning of review that these are one of the best, if not the best, closed back headphones I've ever heard and in all honesty they are. The sound quality is insane. I've actually rated them 8.5 out of 10 for the low end, mid range and high, high end, um, oh god, high end frequencies and the sound stage all get a 10 out of 10 with an overall sound quality rating of 9.5 out of 10. They really are top dollar headphones. The mid range and high um, high frequencies are really nice. They won't. I wouldn't say that the uh, Sen they beat Sennheiser or HD 800s or 700s, but that's because I'm comparing open back with closed back headphones. As far as closed back headphones, these for me were like the TH um, 900s by Fostex, and those when I put them on were like a glorified uh, D2000s or D7000s. They sounded like them, the sound signature was similar, and they were like a glorified version of it with better mid-range and high range. This on the other hand doesn't have that bloated V-shaped sound that the Fostex had, neither did the, the Denons. The Denons obviously have like a greater V-shape, maybe the Fostex is here and the Fish, uh, Fishers or Kenneton should I say is more of a flat line a signature. So it's got a more boring sound should I say, but as far as audio files are concerned that is an absolutely excellent um, trait to have because you can EQ it uh, better. So therefore if it has a flatter sound it must be boring, well no, because the high, end, uh, the high end is really nice and sparkly and the low end, unlike the Sennheiser HD 800s or 700s, is very very present and by that I mean the low end extends really well in the sub bass region and the mid bass is also very good. It doesn't extend as well or wouldn't be classified as a bassy uh, headphone, uh, well, it definitely has bass qualities, but it's not like a bass head headphone where you know this would be more of a bassy headphone, unlike for example the AKGs, which I would never classify as a, a bassy headphone. So, you know, what I'm trying to say is that it's extremely capable, unlike the Sennheiser HD 800s when I tried them on and the 700s. I really didn't feel any sort of bass. They were capable, but they didn't really make me sound, wow, that low end rumble was really there. They were capable of it, but that's only when they were EQ'd to it. These on the other hand, and even the Denons, are things that come out of the box really capable and are uh, present in that region. Therefore, they're not shy in producing those low end sounds. They wouldn't beat something like a um, uh, for example, like a Sony MD, um, MDR XB uh, XB700 in terms of bass, um, but and and they wouldn't beat a Moda D2000s, but they come extremely close in doing that. So low end really impressive, high end and mid range very impressive, but the sound stage is by far my favourite feature of this headphone. And this is probably down to the cups. And the reason I'm saying that is because after modding my uh, D2000 with a, from a plastic to a wooden cup and then even trying a different wooden cup, there was a change in signature. And that came from the decay, that came from the separation and the width and um, the depth that you got. The resonance of a wooden cup changes so much when you change the actual wood itself. It might be slight for some people, but once you've been listening to wooden headphones for a good majority of two or two and a half years, and you try different types of uh, wooden headphones, the signature itself changes and therefore changes the way it sounds. Now the way this is designed is really nice, and there's like a, um, a several step that you get in the um, actual cup. You can look it up online of the Fisher Audio Cups. It was present in the uh, 002s, 003s and everything like that. Um, they're all present. And 
this is the same respect. Due to the old wood used, it is really gives like a vintage sound. So therefore for jazz, um, or even, you know, if you want to put some a nice um, uh, R&B, like recent R&B, hip hop songs or anything like that, the bass that comes through and the highs that resonate off it are sublime. And the depth and width you get of the headphones, um, especially for certain things like gaming or even you know listening to music, uh, like a concert, um, it is really nice. Sounds that I you know I I know I can hear in the D two thousands or in the AKGs, were just even more present and even more alive. Um, similarly to how I compared a TH nine hundred uh, from the Fostex to the HD eight HD eight hundreds by Sennheiser, how I heard this different types of airy soundstage. This isn't um, airy, not at all, but the fact that the soundstage has this kind of liberty to move around, the music has this liberty to move around, is something that I have never experienced before um, in a closed back headphone. Um, I have heard it in the old WW2s, uh, they had a really amazing soundstage, but this takes it to another level and gives this extra kind of class to it, let's put it that way. So the soundstage by far is my favourite feature of this headphone, despite it being an excellent headphone um, overall. Overall I've rated this headphone a 9.5 out of 10, and that is very rare for me to do. I mean I, ra I rated my modded D2000s a 9.5, and that is literally a fan favourite over the internet, is one of the best and most seeked out headphones to get. I mean that's a D2000 modded with D5000 cups for example, uh, and maybe Lawton Audio pads, uh, and even a recable. That is like the, um, not to say cheap and cheerful, but you know, because £280 for this isn't exactly cheap, um, but in terms of headphones, and as far as audiophile headphones go, D2000s that are modded are very sought after and are very much recognised throughout the audio com uh, community. And even something, another one which is a 9.5 rating, funnily enough I've got three headphones in front of me and the only three headphones that I've given 9.5 uh, out of 10 are, are the ones that I've all got in front of me and I all have in my possession. This is my mum's now, this is my personal one, and this is now going to be my sec uh, secondary personal one. Um, the AKG K545s also received a 9.5 out of 10, and this is also a 9.5 out of 10, but this, in my opinion, takes it to another level in terms of its overall sound. It's just insanely good. It's just really, really good. Um, and I can't stress that enough. I mean, for the price, it's a 9.5 out of 10. If this was cheaper, this would be a 10 out of 10, a 12 out of 10, um, whatever you want to put it. This, for me, beats a Fostex. This, for me, beats a Denon. This, for me, beats um, uh, a Order Z, a closed back, that is, um, XC. This beats every single closed back headphone I've heard. The only one that I can't really pin down really well is a JVC Victor, which is very rare to come across, and a very old MDR 1000, I think it was called, uh, by Sony. Like a, it, it's a very rare model that was discontinued and has a wooden finish to it, um, and it's around 1,500 pounds or maybe 2,000 uh, pounds. That is also very hard to come by. But these are 475 pounds, and in terms of what I'm comparing it to, to 1,500 pound headphones, these are an absolute steal. And I really do suggest you guys to go and check these out. Um, they are really hard to come by, but if you can find them, go ahead, try them out, and see what you think. I think Kenneton, aka Fisher Audio, have done an excellent job throughout for this headphone and the pricing of it to me is actually very fair and very um, reasonable for what you get. It trumps the mid-range and um, high-end uh, range of um, my Denon D2000s which have been modded, so D5000. It beats the high range and the low-end range of the AKG um, K545s by a long mile. And in terms of looks, I think it takes the cake in terms of how it looks. And it's build quality, having a, a removable cable and a beautiful constructed headphone really just trumps everything that I've, um, that I've come across in terms of a closed back headphone. So overall guys, if you're looking for a nice closed back headphone, definitely check these out. Now I should just quickly uh, finish this by concluding that the Kenneton are like a premium brand from Fisher Audio. 
I only found that out after I got the headphones and actually these headphones are a surprise in the mail for me because I wasn't aware of these but essentially this is like a premium brand from Fisher Audio. Fisher Audio makes really good headphones and ear, in-ear earphones but to separate the good um, and cheap from like the premium high-end they've come up with a brand called Kenaton and that is why you see Fisher Audio and Kenaton written in the same uh, sentence or same review. Anyway guys, I've been totally dubbed and these have been the Kenaton Magister headphones um, and I've got to say, amazing, absolutely amazing. Alright guys, take care, bye bye.